Hi, I'm Matt from Wex Photographic, and today I'll be comparing DSLR, compact, and compact system cameras. If you've already had a look at what's available, you might appreciate that cameras come in a range of sizes and at a range of prices, and trying to find the right one can be confusing. The vast majority of models can be divided into three categories, compacts, DSLRs, and compact system or mirrorless cameras. We'll take a look at each one in turn so that you can find your ideal match. First up, compact cameras. Compact cameras can be bought reasonably cheaply and many of them fit right into your pocket. Not only that, but many are also loaded with the exact same technology as in pricier cameras, such as interval shooting, Wi-Fi and high resolution touchscreens. If you want something for everyday snaps or for going on holiday with, they're a great option, particularly as many have zoom lenses that stretch from wide angle right through to telephoto, so that you can be prepared for every eventuality. Although many compacts won't give you the same image quality or manual control as a DSLR, there are a number of options which either come close or manage to match them. Spending a little more on a compact will give you raw shooting to give you maximum control over editing, as well as a larger sensor which could potentially give you better image quality than you otherwise would be able to on such a camera. You'll also have more control over things like shutter speed and aperture, helping you to achieve different effects in your images. The lenses on these kind of cameras are usually either prime lenses, which means they only offer one focal length, such as 28mm, or short zoom lenses, such as from 28 to 100mm. Now, on paper it looks like they won't be as flexible as cameras with longer zoom lenses, although the quality of these lenses will often be higher. You'll also have a wider aperture on these kind of lenses than on the lenses of cheaper cameras, which can help you when capturing images in low light, and also when trying to blur backgrounds. DSLRs are larger, heavier and more expensive than many compact cameras, but they do have many advantages. They accept a range of high quality lenses and you can vary these as and when you need to, depending on the shot you're taking. So, you can use a standard lens for everyday shots, a macro lens for close-up work and a telephoto lens for wildlife, all on the same body. DSLRs also typically offer much more in the way of manual control over most compact cameras and many people prefer handling these to compacts as they tend to be more ergonomically designed. They also tend to be compatible with lots of accessories, such as flash guns for extra light and remote releases for long exposures, so they're great when you want maximum control. Compact system or mirrorless cameras promise the best of both worlds. Many of them offer the same kind of size and quality of sensor as you'd find in a DSLR, and they're compatible with interchangeable lenses, but their bodies and lenses are typically smaller. This is because they have an internal construction that's much closer to a compact than it is to a DSLR, with no mirror box and usually no optical viewfinder of any kind. It's a rapidly expanding category filled with various models of different sizes and styles, and it's where manufacturers are often choosing to debut new technologies. Most compact system cameras don't offer a viewfinder of any kind, so bear this in mind if you prefer to compose your images this way. Even so, a lot of them that don't do have the option of using an external viewfinder in the hot shoe, and we are seeing a lot of compact system cameras released now with high quality viewfinders built into them. For more tips and advice, why not visit us on Twitter, Facebook or Google+, or check out our blog at wexphotographic.com forward slash blog.